Hello everyone and welcome to the CS Revelation. Uh, welcome to a new video on Zojo. In today's video, you will learn how to navigate the Zojo IDE, how to customize it, and how to organize your projects, um, along with building your first app. That is an app that uh, will be composed of just one button. Um, so we're going to learn how to add uh, controls to our window and uh, make them do certain things. So for example, this is a very simple say hello program. When a button is clicked, it will display a message box or a dialogue box that says hello world. So let's get to it. So let's go ahead and choose the type of project that we're creating. And as you see here, there are so many options, uh, but we're going to begin by creating desktop applications. So choose desktop. And then for the application's name, let's just simply put uh, hello project. Click OK. And the workspace is displayed. On the toolbar, one of the buttons that appears is the run button. Clicking this button will tell Zojo to build a temporary copy of your project and execute it. You may also run your project by choosing the run from the project menu. Although you have yet to add any code to your project, go ahead and run it now. You will be presented with a blank window. While this may not seem impressive, quite a lot has already been accomplished. First, your project has been converted from Zojo project file into an app that can be run on your computer. In addition, your app can respond to menu commands and keyboard shortcuts. Um, so for example, if you press the command queue on a Mac or Alt F4 on Windows, your blank app will quit and will be returned to Zojo. You can also access the exit command from the file menu. You can also press the close button on the blank window. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to press Alt F4 because I'm using Windows. Running your app in this way allows you to access the Zojo debugger. What it does not give you, however, is an app that you can share with other people. The app produced by running is simply temporary and is only intended to be used for testing and debugging. So to create an app that can be shared, you need to build your application. And the build button can is found directly to the right of the run button on the toolbar. Or you may also choose run application from the project menu. Now keep in mind that you can run your projects with the free version of Zojo, but you must purchase a Zojo license in order to build your apps. So if you build your project uh, now, you will have simply uh, the option to either sign in to a purchased license or just go ahead and purchase a license. Now, there are various options that you can pick from. So there's the desktop. Uh, option there is the Pro, Pro Plus, Lite, Web, and iOS. So you can pick basically based on your preference. And that is simply when you're ready to build apps, when you're ready to share your apps with the rest of the world. I mean, the free version is simply quite awesome because you, you have the option to strengthen your skills uh, developing applications, and you can play around with this app, you can develop, you can... There's no time limit on how long you can use Zojo, the free license. However, once you decide to share your app with the rest of the world, then you must purchase a license. Um, and of course, as you see here, there are various options. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our Hello World program. Now, if you notice on the right side of this window, we have the library option, which contains a huge list of controls. Some of them might seem familiar. So for example, we have a regular button, we have checkboxes, we have radio buttons, we have pop-up menus, we have text fields, we have a combo box, you have a label, canvas, and you name it. We will go over um, the majority of these controls uh, throughout the rest of the videos. But today, uh, let's go ahead for the purpose of the Hello World program, let's just go ahead and add an OK button. Now there are two options how to add this OK button. It's either that you double click it and it will be added into a default location on the window or you could simply drag it and drop it anywhere uh, on this window. Now to remove it, you can right click on it and click delete or you could simply click the delete uh, button on your keyboard. 
So let's say we have this button and you can customize the height and width, the dimensions of this button by dragging the handles. Um, this is definitely doable on a Windows uh, system. However, on Macs, uh, you might find it uh, not uh, feasible because Mac restricts you to a certain look and feel. Um, you might be able to drag it horizontally, but maybe not vertically. So don't think that the version of Zojo that you have is definitely lacking some features. No, on the contrary. It's just that Mac operating system restricts you to a certain look and feel. However, with Windows, you're free to do whatever you want. Okay, so let's suppose that this is the button. Um, and let's say we wanted to customize some other properties about it. Now, every control, every control is considered an object once you add it to the window, it's considered an object, an instance of this class. So each one of these is simply a class. And once you instantiate it, or once you create an, a button or a control of that class, this is considered an instance. And every instance is going to have two things about it. The first one is a list of properties, means descriptive elements that you can customize um, and that is to change the way the button looks or some of the features about the button. And to access that list of properties, you can simply go to the inspector window. So the inspector window gives you this huge list of properties that you can adjust. So there's the name, so you can rename it. There is the position, which we customized it using the handles, but you can simply customizing it by typing the values for these properties. You can also set some other properties, which we're going to look uh, through uh, in future videos uh, by customizing, for example, the caption and make it say something different. So let's make it say, say hello. Um, and automatically that changes. Now, the other section of elements that you get with every object is called the actions. Um, so actions are basically when the button is clicked or when a certain event occurs, like hovering over the button or let's say, um, so that is during runtime. So when the application is being executed and you click, let's say, this control, this button, some action is going to occur. And that's the coding part. So we will see that in a minute. So let's keep customizing our button. So let's say we want to also increase the font size of this caption. Um, that is also accessed through inspector. However, if you notice here on the top section of the inspector, we have an ID section, which we uh, have used some of its features, but also there's this gear button that gives you access to another set of properties. Um, and there is a section here called font. And here we have the font size, and I can simply set that to any value I want. So let's go ahead and just make it 35. And I can make the text bold. I can make it underlined, italic, and so on. So feel free to do whatever you want. And that is how to customize this button. At this point, we have customized our button. We set all the properties. We have customized the way this button looks. However, if I run this application, there's not much that this button can do. So all it does is just gives me this executable um, and it has this button the way I customized it. If I hover over it, it changes in color and so on. But when I click it, a button is supposed to execute a certain action. So let's exit out of this. And to add a certain, let's say, job or a certain task or a certain action, that when this button is clicked, it will be executed, you're going to add some code. So here's what we want to do. We want to double click this button. And when you double click it, this menu pops up and gives us the huge list of events that based on which we want a certain action to be executed. So these are called event handlers. So let's say we are only interested in the 
pressing of the button. So select pressed, click OK. And once you do that, you get a code editor. Now, while you're doing all this, notice on the left side here is that this is our window. This is the list of controls that it contains. This is my control, which is button one. And here is the event handler that I'm going to be coding. So based on the clicking on this button one, I will be executing this code that I'm going to be typing. Let's suppose that uh, clicking the button will simply display a message box or a message dialog box that shows the hello world on it. So go ahead and type message. And as you notice here, that every time you type uh, parts of the code, it starts automatically generating certain you know, suggestions. So if you see those three dots, just go ahead and press the tab key and it will give you some options. So we want uh, message dialogue and the put dot and then it suggests show because that's the only option that goes with it. So we're going to choose show and um, what message we want to show in that message dialogue box. We're simply going to type in uh, the message in quotation marks because it's a text value, it's a string value, it must go in quotation marks. So I'm going to say hello world. Okay, so this is the code. Um, and as you notice here, um, coding in Zojo um, does not really follow a lot of restriction like semicolons in Java or C++ or um, it's quite... Uh, an easy to learn language. It's very similar to um, the other languages. Uh, however, it eliminates a lot of the restrictions that might become tedious and ambiguous once you start coding. So no semicolons needed uh, at the end of each instruction. Um, and as you notice that it helps or suggests uh, some of the code um, while, when you start typing. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our program and see the difference now. So when we run it, so we got our executable here, and this is our button. Earlier when we clicked it, it didn't really do much. So now when we click on it, notice we get a dialog box that says, hello world, and you click OK, it exits. You click say hello again, and it says hello world. Uh, of course, you know, because we chose dialog box, it means that it is... Um, using uh, the features of a Windows dialog box. So as you notice here, there is a message that shows with an icon. Um, we haven't customized the title of that shows on this message box. And there's also a button here that could be clicked. Um, there are various options that you can customize your message box to look like, and we will explore those in the future. So for now, I hope that this video was very helpful getting you started. Uh, creating your first app with Zojo, and we will begin exploring the rest of the features in the rest of the videos. So stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one.